This is an audio to go with the presentation Information Ecosystems, some headlines uh, by Simon Batchelor for uh, DNet in Bangladesh as part of Kate's trip. Uh, so this is, I think m many of you will understand that this, the survey that was conducted was part of the Mobilizing Knowledge for Development program and it was an attempt to try and understand how quickly the policy actors around the world are changing their access to technology and the way they use it. So the study was conducted in six countries of which Bangladesh was one and this slide presentation presents uh, some of the headlines with a particular reference to Bangladesh. Uh, the studies now have a shorthand title of Information Ecosystem. Originally they were um, Research Policy Praxis, but nobody particularly liked it. So um, we've, we've changed the name and the working paper reflects this. And in each uh, country there were about 50 to 100 face-to-face -face interviews and Bangladesh ended up at 101 interviews. Um, it was really we understand that policy is a complex process and that, and that actually, um, you know, it depends on things like the value given to different types of evidence and the information capability, all that stuff that, that uh, DNet knows so well. But there is also an element of an emerging and changing communications landscape. So actually in the last couple of years, people have got smartphones and people are beginning to use tablets. And we wanted to try and get, gather some um, information and some evidence of what people were actually using uh, in order to inform how we as knowledge brokers, knowledge intermediaries might engage with the policy environment. Uh, so there were three key action research questions. What is the current e information ecosystem of actors? What are the possibilities that there will be a change in behaviour towards new services and therefore can researchers and or research intermediaries use the existing or anticipated ecosystem to better place research evidence that might inform policy action. Um, the survey was complex and um, I won't try and explain on this slide uh, all the different modules that they were uh, involved with. But basically, it was a set of descriptors, a set of questions about their access and use of information technology, uh, a set of questions about the demand for information to try and put it in the context of whether people um, needed uh, particular facts and figures, whether they had a greater preference for facts and figures, and whether that affected their early adoption of technology. And then actually we use something called the theory of planned behavior to try and ask a set of questions about what their, how their behavior might change over the coming year. Um, I'll explain that a little bit uh, at the end. I'm hesitating because I've got a feeling that in this presentation I decided not to. Um, Country descriptors, we, we just chose the countries to get a mix of Africa and Asia. We chose them according to get a mix of connectivity as ranked by the ITU, the International Telecommunications uh, Union. And they have a rank called the IDR, which is something to do with connectivity. The exact description eludes me at the moment. Um, we also tried to get a mix of governance ranking, so basically whether a government was particularly uh, bureaucratic or not. In terms of the descriptor slide, this slide actually represents those numbers from um, uh, the initial tranche of data uh, of 339 points, in which case only I think about 10 or 15 of Bangladesh are involved. But you'll see that basically it gives a mix of institutions and we uh, coded with hindsight uh, their executive responsibility, so whether they were at the very top level in leaderships, MPs, um, you know, uh, permanent secretaries. Uh -huh. 
permanent secretaries or whether they were uh, in some sort of management role um, and uh, practitioners and researchers. We also asked them to state whether they were involved in policy making, knowledge brokering or research and uh, interestingly of course people ask answer that they're involved in more than one of those things. So if you move on to the next slide you see uh, that actually it's a Venn diagram with lots of overlap. So across the whole sample 42% of people actually said they were involved in in, in each of those processes. Um, and then we have some other descriptor data that we haven't yet um, put into this slide deck uh, that unpacks how people engage with policy making and how people engage with knowledge brokering. That will come later. So do they have access to ICTs? Well, unsurprisingly, yes. 90% um, have a PC, 95% have a laptop. 40% uh, now have a smartphone. That was true for Bangladesh, but it was also true across the whole sample. Um, now, this compares with, let's say, the Pew Internet Survey is a survey of your, uh, American households and their use of tablets in about June 2011 was sitting at about 8%. Tablet use amongst the policy makers is slightly higher at 12%. So the political elite, those who uh, are actually engaged in the policy environment, do actually have access to uh, technology in a comparable way to Britain and America. Um, what was fascinating to me was that of those who have a smartphone, they actually know how to use them. So they're not only getting their emails and using the insta uh, internet, but they're actually trying things like sending instant messages and recording a video. Uh, I say this is surprising to me because uh, previously I had a smartphone that uh, I used literally for voice and text because it was too slow and it um, wasn't particularly intuitive. Since I've got my new ga uh, Galaxy Android one, then I, I do do all the fancy stuff. But uh, it's interesting to note that people, you know, not only have a smartphone, but have explored it. The conclusion for that is then that uh, the ecosystem does now include smartphones and that um, uh, knowledge intermediaries and researchers could potentially use them as conduits for research communication. This graph just compares the smartphone ownership with some of the other countries. You'll see that some countries tend to prefer Blackberries, um, whilst uh, Nepal seems to uh, prefer iPhones, although there are lots of these other brands, probably much like my uh, older machine that I used to have. That will change very quickly and I think we need to uh, keep a view on how this is changing so that we're making sure we're delivering um, knowledge apps in the right format. We also tried a whole bunch of statements. Um, these statements are self-scored uh, on a Likert scale between very strong agreement and very strong disagreement and in themselves they don't actually tell us much because somebody may say that they really like facts and figures um, uh, when in fact they just feel that they ought to say that they li like facts and figures but it's when the whole sample comes together and we look for linkages between these statements and between um, technology ownership and between themselves between the statements but that we find some really interesting things so on this like the the briefings face to face you can see that as connectivity grows the uh, uh, Ethiopia if you look here on this graph um, Ethiopia Ghana has lower connectivity than say India and Kenya and you'll see that as connectivity grows um, the briefings face-to-face -face officially in meetings tends to disappear. You'll see on these graphs that we have actually split uh, North India with South India. That's because um, we had this hypothesis that the North of India was um, slightly more government-driven 
uh, whereas the South India would be slightly more business driven and perhaps the South of India might have more connectivity. So you'll see that uh, again informal briefings there's a there's a real exceptions in North India and Kenya but the green lines show very clearly that people are, are saying that they surf the web directly um, they are disagreeing with the statement I will not surf the web directly but will ask an assistant ie they mean that they surf the web directly even in the low connectivity countries of Ethiopia. What does that mean for knowledge brokering? Well, it means that there is some evidence from this data that policy actors are increasingly searching for information themselves and therefore as knowledge intermediaries, the easier we can make it for them to find the research, the more likely they are to use it. With the caveat that use of evidence in policy making depends on many other factors than just access to it. Um, do they want facts and figures? These were a few statements about actual, they must have the latest research data. I said earlier that it's about the linkages between these statements and the rest of the data that becomes interesting. So for instance, if there is a strong, where there is a strong demand for research evidence, facts and figures, there is also early adoption of technology. So people who feel that they really need to be in the know uh, actually invest in the technology. What are they reading? Well, this uh, slide just gives you some, uh, uh, some of the things that we asked them about and the range is how frequently they, uh, they read them across the whole sample. This is the Bangladesh chart. Um, and you'll see that actually they, uh, they do prioritize news and media. We've always known that news and media, traditional media, is an important part of the information flows amongst policy actors. They are interested in research, but uh, they, they do feel that research produced by uh, local uh, institutes or by the private sector they read that much less than international sourced research. Um, they also look for government statements and they're looking for NGO and civil society research. Um, this thing about local research and international uh, research, we, we asked a set of questions uh, and made statements about international research is trusted more than local. Um, or that local research was not so relevant. You'll see that whilst they don't necessarily strongly agree or disagree, there's a, a sort of hovering around the neutral point for local research was often not relevant, they do quite strongly agree across the whole sample that international research is trusted more than local. Uh, so where else are they getting information? Well, Policymakers are human and they gather it from lots of different sources and we wanted to put this gathering of data in context. Uh, this is a very complicated um, chart which uh, you're welcome to try and get your head around later on. But the headlines are that news is coming in through the TV and the internet. People are checking on news by internet, but TV is still the dominant uh, first place of call for, for news. Um, health is still dominated by face-to-face -face, uh, activities, so people are seeking, still seeking health professionals and discussing their health problems with them. Um, they keep in touch with friends and family by phone, and phone is actually the strongest there. Uh, government rules on transport, well that's a face-to-face -face thing. Now that may shift soon. Uh, certainly in Britain we've seen smartphone apps that tell you when things are, uh, when trains are coming and when um, buses are coming, so that may shift gradually. The weather is still the TV and the markets and money is uh, surprisingly still face-to-face. Uh, do they trust the places that they get their information from? Well, again, the headlines are, there's no clear view on which media is most popular, 
but they do agree that media fails to cover development issues. Um, they, the, there was a, across all the countries and in all the different situations that they felt that the media failed to construct the development issues constructively. Um, there was a general lack of trust in the media and as we've mentioned earlier there was a general lack of trust of local research. So this has been a really small glimpse of the data. I hope that this voiceover track has helped a little bit uh, and that Kate can find some time to discuss this with you. Uh, we have a working paper which was made before the Bangladesh um, data was available and there will be a research report um, in the next month or so. Uh, there will also be a Bangladesh report that we would like to get your comment on um, and it's all just been slightly delayed through uh, various reasons and um, yes, yeah, I hope this has been helpful. Please do contact me if you have any questions. I haven't tried to present everything in the, in the studies. Um, I've just given you a few headline data. Uh, thank you.